where we watch all the best picture winners of all time in random order with random friends. And today's random friend is Enzo Prisnes. Hello. Hi. How are you? All right. Okay. <laughs> you seem good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I walked out of a dentist appointment today. <gasps> like walked out like the you know, angry. Like in the middle of it. Not in the middle of it, but. I agreed to a price, and then they tried to get me to sign for a different, much higher price. What? And yeah, and so I just left. And I took the day off work for it. <laughs> so, you know, I got the rest of the day off, but I still got all these damn cavities. Oh, okay, so like they told you go before. It wasn't like they did the work and then you like stiffed the... No, that would be... That'd be so badass. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, could I just run out to the car for a second? Yeah, th- that's more like, that would have been like... That would be great. Today. Cool. Yeah. Yours is more like I want to speak to the manager, white lady. Cool. Yeah. And a That's lot of so people cool. tell me I do embody a lot of aspects of a white woman. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, they no. usually say it is not a good thing. Though. No, I, I know. Up on tone. America's second most hated demographic. Definitely. <laughs> so but hey, I mean, for where I'm at, that's nothing but an upgrade. Oh, I believe me. If anybody knows that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Funny times. So we're gonna watch um, the French Connection. Yes. Do you know anything about the French Connection? I don't, and uh, I'm not a big movie person. I've seen. I think I've done the math with Danny Goodwin. Yeah. I've, I've seen maybe 25 movies in my life. You are gonna get blown away. And uh, just because like there's gonna be sound and Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of movement and color. It's not that I don't like movies. <laughs> just I'm never in the mood to, like, sit down for an hour and an hour or two hours. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was, I don't remember, it was Lord of the Ring or The Hobbit, and I fell asleep during it. I'm not that a big was, Lord of the Ring fan. Honestly, a uh, pretty common experience. It was whatever one that had the spiders and the trees. I don't know which one that was. And you know, I did not watch any of the Hobbit ones because I had seen enough. I think that was one of the Hobbit ones. With the first three, I don't remember spiders and trees and the. It might have been like twenty fourteen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, those movies were genuinely boring, and nobody really—they uh, were very lukewarm in terms of reception. Yeah, so, I'm not a big fantasy person to begin with, mm. so it wasn't. But yeah, I'm here. I'm ready to give movies a second chance. Well, good. Yeah. Thank you for... Usually we uh, discuss, like, how the specific movie we're watching, you know, mm-hmm. quality was. But in this case, I think we'll just kind of talk about... Oh, it's movies in general. How yeah. movies are feeling for you <laughs> after watching this. Yeah, I'm still pissed from this dentist. I'm ready to <sighs> let my worries sink away and sink into the French Connection. Is what do you think the French Connection's about? It sounds like there's going to be a car chase. <sighs> I'm a big fan. Yes. Uh... Maybe, uh, do they like blow up the Eiffel Tower or something? <gasps> I hope so. I don't. Because that happens in one so. of the other movies I've seen, Team America World Police. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want to see that again? I like mean, Eiffel Tower blow up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, was, it looks cool then, and Puppet. It, it sounds like there's going to be some kind of uh, crime element. Mm hmm. And. I want you to understand this is 100% genuine. I really don't know yeah. what this movie is. But just from the name, it sounds like there'll be some kind of crime, some kind of corruption, <laughs> a deal going wrong. Yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, some kind of weapons deal. And that, That's my understanding. I have have you seen? No. Oh, okay, good. I, okay. Uh, my underst- I do know something about it, though, simply because uh, Gene Hackman is my favorite actor yeah. of all time. Um, was he in Team America? Um, no. I mean, it's hard to know because of voices. Mm-hmm. But they didn't really hire a bunch of people to be voices in that movie. They did it pretty much themselves, right? Yeah, so, I believe so. Yeah. Um, no, Gene Hackman, is, but I, at one point I decided he was my favorite actor because I just loved him and everything I saw. And I tried to go backwards and work my way backwards through his filmography, which goes into the 60s. Through the 60s. Yeah. And I made it all the way back to 1974 
And then I abandoned that project for some reason. And this came out in 1972. Oh, calling it a project. It was a project. Because I was like, he's made a shit ton of movies. And I was like, I just want to see more Gene Hackman in my life. Yeah. Um, How do you pick a favorite actor? You just fall in love. He's like, he's like my dad. Okay. He's not literally like my dad. He's nothing like my actual dad. Mm -hmm. But when I watch him perform, I'm like, daddy. There's a maternal... There, he feel. well like there's a paternal feeling from him like I want is him paternal to be... man and maternal woman yes oh I didn't I didn't know that yeah um so yeah I get that uh, maybe it's a maternal thing too honestly mm. he, I just want Gene Hackman to be my parent yeah uh so the only movie I skipped when I was working my way backwards was The French Connection two because I didn't want to see that before I saw The French Connection one. Oh, I see. And I know he plays a very famous role in this Popeye Doyle. Like, it's the one of the roles he's the most known for, and mm-hmm. he's a cop. So that's why I'm like, yeah, there's crime. There's got to be crime. Yeah, he's a cop, there's a right? Cop uh, and then I think the Eiffel Tower blowing up would be pretty badass, so let's, yeah. let's see if that Maybe happens. the Arc de Triomphe falls over or something. Maybe all of it. Maybe it just goes down like dominoes, like all of Paris, soccer, cur, the whole thing. Yeah, that's really. the thing. When you have too many monuments, mm-hmm. when you have too many historical sites, if you put them too close together, you take one out. <laughs> it's like building seven. They're all going to collapse right. onto each other. This is what I... France, like. you got to space out your your historical sites. You can't put them that close together. This is what I worry about. This is what keeps me up at night with all the shot bars on Dirty Six. It's like, what if... Oh, you take one out. Yeah. It's Do you remember like when... Firecrackers, like Chinese firecrackers. When the Velveeta Room almost burnt down because the place next to it set on fire? Yes. Oh, man. I was on 6th Street that night coming over from Mugshots, and there were fire trucks all around Velveeta Room, and me and Danny were like, oh, my God, what happened? And we ran up, and the second... We were like, what's going on? What's going on? And the second the firefighter was like, oh, this bar next door. We were like, oh, all right, that's fine. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was like, Okay, as long as our, you know, middle of the road open mic night is still <laughs> unscathed, as long as we can still bomb in front of six people every week, then, woo! Thank you know, God. it would only be shut down for like three weeks too if it caught on fire. They just like scrub the walls and reopen it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. be that big of a loss. I'm not sure it. It would be the first time it had caught on fire. I have no idea. I know it used to be somewhere else. It used to be in a strip club across the street. Or wait. It used to be across the street, and then they moved into this space, which used to be a strip club. Yeah, that's such a history. I think that's the story. Because, like, this, it makes more sense when you think of the stage. The stage used to have a hole on it. Oh. Uh, now the stage shape and size makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of wish they... think on stage makes more sense. I wish they bring the pole back. Have you ever played with a stripper pole? In what? <laughs> no. The I mean, I've touched one. But, like, the ones that spin around no. and, like, jumped around on them, they're really fun. And do you use, do you... I have, my friend has one dance, in our living room. A pole dance? And we spent, like, three hours until I got sick from spinning around so much. It's so fun. Seriously? Yeah, I, I, I 100% genuinely recommend if you see a stripper pole, just start... You don't have to be good at it. Just grab onto it really tight and yeah. spin around. It's... You, you enjoy it even though... I got sick, yeah. You enjoy pole dancing even though you're not good at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm if beginning... anyone had seen it that I wasn't close with, it would be horrifically humiliating. I am beginning to understand why people will say you're a white woman. Yeah. That, that is... Yeah, that I is... dance on tables a lot. I call all my friends bitches. You took up pole dancing as a hobby circa 2016? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's uh, empowering now even though I used to mock it. You ever put a henna tattoo on your hands and Instagram it? Only the, like the ones that go all the way. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And while I'm wearing a bendy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Fantastic. At a music festival? I love it. Oh, yeah. Only the ones I get in free because I know the promoter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is Two Chicks Watch the French Connection. Let's Hell see yeah. what happens. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Sure. Yeah, 72 is farther back than people think. You think 70s, you think disco, but this is like... Oh, this is from the 70s? Yeah. Okay, there's no way they're not going to really have to tell They didn't have a budget for that. <laughs> yeah, they did. Miniatures. Yeah. This is when they were doing all sorts of disaster movies. Early 70s, they were 
They had Towering Inferno. And, yeah. Is that Backdraft? Oh, this is the same director as uh, The Exorcist. Uh, another one I haven't seen. But you've heard of it. The Exorcist, yeah, of course. There's like a famous projectile vomiting scene, right? That's all you need to know. Nice. Oh, wow. For the listener at home, there's boats. <laughs> is that your guy? You gotta tell me when your guy's on screen. Oh, uh, yeah. When your dad's on screen. That's my dad. That, that's him? No, that's not him. Oh. That's some French guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's the connection. I see. My guy has a boss mustache. That guy kind of looks like Joe Flaherty from SCTV. From what? Oh, it's a Canadian sketch show. He kind of looks like Mr. Bean. There you go. That guy looks like my grandfather on the left. Yeah? He's yeah. short grandfather. I love in France how the street signs are up on the buildings. Mm-hmm. It makes it very confusing, but it uh, has a cool historical feel. But getting around it makes it hard. Makes it hard. Yeah, you don't know what's the business and what's the street sign, you know what I mean? I'm going to try to go to France later this year. I've never been. It's incredible. And I'm like, I've been obsessed with France since high school. Oh, you're a Francophile? Yeah. It's pretty cool. People really love to overstate how much they hate Americans. Oh, I'm sure. They probably just hate those people. The kind of people who come back and say they hate Americans are probably hateful. Yeah. What hateful did you travelers. do? What yeah. did you do to have that brought up? Yeah, dude. What were you doing that so clearly indicated that you're American? Also, what were you wearing? Yeah. That's why I want to know. I'm just in my Mickey Mouse ears and my American flag tracksuit. <laughs> With my Pentax around my neck. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm glad there's been no dialogue. It's really given us a chance to catch up. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. We get that it's France. He doesn't have to be carrying a baguette. <laughs> You're really hitting us over the head with this. All right, already we got crime. And he's wearing a bindi. Whoa. Holy shit, in the face? Man, first Damn. three minutes of the movie. That's genuinely... Okay, so you don't watch a lot of movies, so I'll have to fill you in on some things. Oh, he took some of the baguette. Oh, what an asshole. I wonder if it's the blood soaked part. But what? usually you see people get shot and they just fall over. They don't get their face blown off. That was intense. Yeah. Yeah, one of the other movies I've seen, Finding Nemo, there was a single instance of anyone getting shot in the face. <laughs> I'm going to slowly uncover like all the movies you've seen. I bet we could by the end of the episode. Is over. I have very limited things to compare this to. If he reaches into her hair and pulls out a submachine gun or something. Is he just doing paper delivery? He's wearing a suit. That's suspect. He's too rich to be doing paper delivery. With a cigar in his mouth? Yeah. Nobody reads that many papers. Oh, it's, he's delivering into a store where they sell papers. I get it. Do you think that first scene where they arrested that guy out of the... And they threw him against the wall. Was that just to establish that they're police? Or do you think that'll be relevant? Well, they were looking for his, like, Later connection, his hookup. Yeah. So I think it established that they're, like, drug enforcement. <gasps> Look, the big hair's fake. <gasps> you see that? Yeah. Oh, there's stuff in the papers. Oh, they're putting stuff in the papers in the papers. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, boats. It's really... I don't know why they chose to do that in front of the giant plate glass window in front of the store. <laughs> you think they'd go do their criminal stuff in a back room. I know. Things that, that people have... Criminals have learned since 72. Oh, again, for the listener. Yeah. Uh, we're back to some nautical boat scenes. Yeah. Uh, we're picking uh, seaweed sea- out of tide pools. Sea, sea cucumbers? You can eat it. Please oh, eat that it. That is a beautiful boat. Look at that. 
Please yeah, be so that French that you just eat sea life. Sea boogers. Yeah. Yes! Oh, yes! There's no way that's good. That's delicious. It wasn't even out of the ocean. It's out of a little pothole on a dock. <laughs> it's just a, just a grease blob from an oil spill. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> when he is selling heroin, that's a bad thing to do. That's terrible. Yeah, the guy's a cop. That's a bad thing to do, too. They're both terrible people. But they're chasing each other, so one of them has... Oh, oh, oh. Did it again. Okay, Brittany. <laughs> oh, I think he did it. I think he used to show it. This is hilarious. Oh shit! He does a much better job of <laughs> hiding it than the other guy. <laughs> oh, he oh he's, he's gonna give him a little wave now. Yes! <laughs> that was awesome. So it's up. Yeah, now it's no longer. Now it's out in the open. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Movies can be fun, yeah. Yeah. In five minutes. 
He's got some adrenaline pumping. Yeah. yeah. Shoot him, he's killed two oh, people. No, no, no. <gasps> there we go. In the back. <laughs> no, I'm a little lost. Me too. Yeah, that's, good. that's the undercover agent, right? Uh, the guy in the back Not enough machine. air. Not enough air. That dude had a way bigger afro. Right. I left him! They were probably just jacking the car because it's a nice caddy on the streets. Oh, you're so right. Yeah. Yeah, they probably just took that. Bye bye. What the hell is Thank you. I've watched a lot of them for this podcast. But none of them have been like this. This is like weird. Best picture winners usually aren't like action movies like this. What are they usually? Uh, you know, some important person has a life and you watch it. Uh, maybe they cry. Sometimes. Nothing there except a New York City map. Are you bullshitting me? That car's dirty. But take it in and tear it apart. 20s, not hundreds. That's awesome. Hundreds haven't been invented yet. They hadn't been invented yet? I don't know. Oh. I yeah, know what I thought of the concept. Oh. Oh. Now they bring the car back to France. Mm hmm. We thought my numbers only went to 20 for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we. But what if they went higher? <laughs> you mean we can make a twenty-one dollar bill? No, I think big. I'm thinking big, guys. <laughs> oh my God, you told them about this? <laughs> this idea is incredible. <laughs> we can apply this to science and space exploration. That's the end of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, everybody's happy. Where, when are they going to yes. bust him? Wait, they're getting away with it. Listen, I'll see you pop tonight. Huh? Okay, babe, take care, huh? But. Yeah, credits roll. <laughs> Everything worked. <laughs> Drug dealers win, baby. Hero moment. Ah! <laughs> he came in the same way. Same way. Oh. This might be the car chase. Yes, yeah, definitely a car chase. Bad idea, dude. 
Oh no. This is the like the end of the Blair Witch Project. Oh, you haven't seen that movie. No. <laughs> I don't know how to now talk you just, to you. Now you just gave away the end of the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're welcome. That one's probably not worth. It's gross. Oh, that's the FBI guy. Yeah. There's... I wonder if he's there. Oh, fucking hell. Major shit. He said bring out the gas. Yeah, we gotta wake us before. Yeah. These guys, though, definitely deserve it. Out. Still about a French guy. Huh? Oh. Wait, was that the FBI guy? feeling. Except I know there's a sequel of Gene Hackman in it, so. <laughs> Come on, you gotta suspend this disbelief. What if you got what really if animated a, in the second? What if it's a prequel? I haven't seen it. Oh. Okay, now we're back in. Alright. Now we're having fun again. <laughs> So wait, his partner is ducking and weaving, and he just decided to yeah, do this slowly yeah. walk straight at it. Oh, shit. Was that the FBI agent? Did he totally murder the FBI agent? Yep. No. Yep. He's going to be in so much trouble. Oh, my God, dude. He doesn't even care. You shot Mulder. The son of is here. I saw it. I'm gonna get him. Just kill the Dude. federal agent. This guy is crazy. You're dead, man. <laughs> I know, man. He's intense. He always told me. I never really understood. <gasps> All that sneaking and I are just marching through. He's like, he's so hopped up on murdery juice. Yeah. He's killed a lot of people in this he movie. He loves it. Yeah. Another FBI. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Single handedly takes out the whole FBI. Wait. What? What the fuck? What was the gunshot? Uh, we're getting a where are they now sequence. What they do to the actor? Guilty of conspiracy. <laughs> Never caught. Whoa. Oh shit, they Did didn't catch him. Did he shoot your dad? Yeah, I bet they were just Oh my god, aside. what a twist. The bad guys gets away. Ah! No way. That's not what I expected. Okay, hold on. Hold on just a second. Whoa. What a twist. Yeah, seriously, that's... Okay. And what if you weren't recording and you'd watch it all over and had to pretend? <laughs> oh, he shot the mom. Crazy. Alright, so uh, do you like movies? I don't know. There's parts I like. I, I'm processing the ending still and I don't know. <laughs> I can't believe he got away. 
he got away, and the cops just got transferred somewhere else and then retired? No, they just uh, reassigned. He killed a federal lady? Well, yeah. And then there was, what was the gunshot? I guess that was maybe from the shootout maybe that was happening. Maybe still just shooting at things. That, I wanted to see uh, the whole thing fall. Uh, that ending, I think, is what put it over the top for me. Because I was just like, oh, okay, this is a cop movie. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay, this is a pretty good cop movie. And then, like, I was like, oh, this is, like, I would see, I would call this a best picture type. I feel like I, I'm just too simple-minded. I want, I want to see, I want to see the off. things happen, yeah. Well, there's a sequel. I mean, if you got time, we could, no, I'm not going to. Yes, but, <laughs> I guess that's the cool part of it, is all loose in, and, like, it's like, yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah, sort of. I mean, there's definitely a... I mean, we were asking from the beginning, who's the good guys, who's the bad guys. And then, like, it settles into, like, a pretty standard, well, cops and robbers, you root for the cops, I guess. Yeah. But it's still, like, who's the good guys, who's the bad guys, because the cops end up Because your dad is clearly, people. yeah, not okay. Not okay at all. Making some pretty questionable calls. And he kills the assassin guy, which is fine. As we covered, it's like yeah. it's okay to kill somebody who shot at you and killed a mom. Yeah, in the process, like that was fine. But like, they never show the re- repercussions of that. Did you have to fill out paperwork? No. You think he just walked away? Did all this take place the same day he murdered that guy? It's even hard to tell. What did the, I still am unclear how they got the car all back together? No, I think they bought a new car and just put the French plates on it. I don't know. Or do you think they? That's true. The name they I feel like there should have been a recap showing. Man, I just need to, I need to see it. Yeah, there's a lot of like they just leave a lot of gaps. I mean, how did he pick up the girl in the red boots? They don't even explain. They don't explain a lot. They just show you things, and then you fast forward to them having accomplished something, and you're not exactly sure how the heck they did that. And here's the, here's the thing. This is like agreed by. Academies that this is a great movie. So yes. I think I, I know I'm wrong, <laughs> but I, I know I'm wrong if I have yeah. questions about this. But maybe movies aren't for me. Maybe I just stick to YouTube videos about woodworking. Okay, it's well, a lot more straightforward. I don't have to think as hard. I might be too dumb to be a movie person. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Most of the movies we watch for this podcast, they all won the Best Picture Award. Uh-huh. And most of them are shit movies. But like, they're not. Oh, they won. It. No, that doesn't mean anything. Okay. The Academy picks bad movies all the time. And it, it happens almost every year. Every once in a while, though, they pick one that's like actually an entertaining movie. I think this movie's entertaining. It's just probably not very satisfying because... Yeah, they did just leave it. But maybe that's... I don't know, there's part of me that kind of likes that, too. I mean, it's a thinker. We both need to think about it. That's... Okay, that's my problem with it. I don't like thinking. Oh, no. Yeah, I think that's... (laughs) It it makes me feel like I'm in school again. I don't like that. (laughs) Film school? No. Or, like, cop school? What kind of school were you in? school where I had to think and use my brain. (laughs) I'm just looking to be entertained. I want to watch... Colors and motion. So that's why you watched Finding Nemo. Great movie. In Great my movie. opinion, should have won the Academy Award. I think it did win an Academy Award. Didn't it win like Best Animated Picture that year? I don't know. It should have. I mean, yeah, Finding Nemo is fantastic. So I guess. And for me, French Connection, you know, almost as good as Finding Nemo. Yeah. But Just at the end, they Finding Nemo is a very clear. I feel like. Uh, it's like they man. didn't find Nemo. It's like they never. Karina, it's like they never found Nemo. What? How shitty of a movie would Finding Nemo be if he was still in that dentist office? <laughs> or just unknown. Like, or just unknown. Nemo? Or or if yeah. Dory got shot and <laughs> the dad didn't even care. He was like, whatever, I gotta find Nemo. And then credits roll and you find out Nemo's still in the dentist's office. 
That's what this is like. Right? I mean, otherwise, it pretty much tracks. There was a couple good chase scenes, just like with the shark and the turtles and whatnot, you know? Yeah, I don't know which one was Squirt, but one of those, probably one of those cops was definitely Squirt. Squirt. Yeah. Uh, Cloudy. Cloudy was Squirt. Cloudy was Squirt, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It is a child's movie. That's what I mean. (laughs) This is humiliating. Well, I was going to ask you if we should recap the plot, but I think we did. I think okay, we I just think... did with like finding Nemo. Well, wait, I wait. I kind of want to because I want. All right, let's do it. You... I want. I want to know if because you you're good at this, so I want to know. If... <laughs> I felt a lot of the time I was too embarrassed to bring it up, but a lot of time I felt pretty lost. All right, you recap the plot and then okay. pause when you don't know what the hell to say. Well, you just tell me if I'm right. Okay. Okay. So, French drug lord and mm-hmm. his assassin friend get the actor guy. Yep. To use him as a guise for being in New York for as location scouts. Right, because they are selling... Heroin. That's right. A lot of it. So they put it in the car. Mm-hmm. Car gets brought over. I'm, I'm still unclear whether the actor guy knew or didn't know if the heroin was in the car. I don't think he knew about the heroin part. He knew that some like shady people were using him to go to New York. Okay. He thought that was his risk level. So he just thought he would be done with them once they get to right. New York. Right. His job was like to get them to the U.S., not to like know what else they're doing. Okay. So then, the the uh, WAP and the big hair girl. Yeah. They. Sal and Annie. They're trying to buy. Actually, I'm unclear where they tie into all this because there was the big guy with the big fat guy with the cigar who looked like uh, the conductor from Thomas the Tank Engine. He's the guy who <laughs> tested yeah. all the heroin and said it's good. Well, no, no, he's the one who had the guy who said it's good. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like uh, the mob boss. Okay. And Sal and Annie have been busted a couple of times for just doing petty mob shit. Mm hmm. Uh, including, I think, uh, Sal whacked a guy. So they're just mobbed up. But how did they connect him to the Thomas the Tank Engine guy? I don't know how Sal and the French guy got together. That's no, no, no. How did they connect the WAP to the Thomas the Tank Engine guy? Oh, well, Sal is working for... Thomas the Tank Engine's, like, his boss. But how did they know that? How did you know that? The cops? How did the cops? How did your dad know? Okay, the cops just kind of know about the mob. Sure. Right. So they've been scoping them off for a while, waiting to catch them on something they can really take them down with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they hadn't been hit them on anything real. And so they they kind of through wiretaps and all yeah. that figured out that something was going on. The mob was going to make a big drug buy, but they didn't know. For but me. they didn't know. Okay. They didn't okay. Know it was the French guys. Yeah. And then they how'd they figure out it was the car? Okay. All right, so they figure out it's the French guys first because they, on the wiretap, they have some French accents, and then just following them around, there's the three French guys, uh, and there's a lot of, like, following, right? Because they had that fancy dinner. Yeah, that, that very fancy steak dinner. So they know that the French people are selling, selling the drugs, but they don't know where the drugs are. But they know that the... That the... Walk, tall hair lady, and the Thomas the Tank Engine guy are buying. Are buying the drugs because they hear a time and a place where the deal's going to go down. I remember, and then they danced. Yeah, they danced. Yeah, mm-hmm. so then they follow them to where the deal's going to go down. Well, they try to, and then the deal doesn't go down because they get uh, the, the mob is on to them. That's why they didn't pick the car up. Yeah, no, that's because well before the car. So first they blow it, it's nothing, and then... Wait, 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 there was an... Did I miss... They attempted to do a swap before... Yeah, but, like, the, uh, they got caught there, the, the mob and the French both noticed the cops were all over them, so... The you, mob, but you don't think that... I thought that was them just having a meeting. They took their meeting to Washington, D.C., just to check, to say, we gotta restart, we gotta restart. But you think that was them trying to do the yeah, handoff? I think so. Where was the car and all that? Hanging out in the garage somewhere. Okay. And that's why Popeye was chasing the French guy, mm-hmm. and he failed at that. And then I think so. The French guy took him to Washington to say, you know, we got to do this now. The cops are on. 
And then the yeah. Italian guy was taking him to Washington and saying, I can't do this right now. My boss doesn't want to buy. And like, there was a pause there. Boss is the Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. On the way back, that's when the assassin dude was like, you know what, I'll kill the cop. Yeah. And that's what kicked off, like, uh-huh. getting Popeye back on the case, even though he failed. Because, like, he gets shot at. It's like, well, clearly, your instinct was right. Okay, so he told his boss, look, they're trying to kill me. His boss said, okay, maybe there is something here. Right, obviously. They wouldn't be trying to kill you if you weren't onto something. Man, so I... the assassin really fucked things up. I really just need it all spelled out for... I... It's it's a complicated movie, for sure. Well, clearly not. You, you understand it so well, and I was over here just trying to figure out who's who this whole time. <laughs> So there's an amazing chase scene between a train and a car. Oh, I like that a lot. That was awesome. Yeah. And, uh... I liked him following him in the subway. That was so That was tingly, yeah. The little wave. Definitely. Uh, okay, so back on track with... Now they're following them around, and they try to actually execute the deal. They take the car, they see tall hair lady driving the car. Driving the Cadillac. Right. I thought she was driving the white car. Was she driving... She was driving the white... She and they were going to swap car. cars. They were going to swap cars, right? But then, um, some just hood. They, they, like, abandon the car for some reason. And some, like, just neighborhood kids try to try boost to the car. Try to yeah, or take the wheels. So the cops end up, like, coming out and all guns ablazing just to end up busting those hood rats. Yeah. Um, and so they're like, fuck, but we have the car now. They have the car now, and they try to find the drugs, and they can't for a while. But how did they get a warrant to search the car? I think they just took the car. Okay. Because it was part of the crime of the kids trying to boost the car. And they were just like, well, we're going to make a big deal of this and like impound the car. And they needed to get the car. Okay, yeah. So they take the car. They find it. Find the drugs. Yeah. French can't figure out where their car went. Yep. <coughs> Sorry. So they go. So, okay, while the French are looking for the car, the cops are stalling them. They find the drugs in the car. They either put the car back together or buy a duplicate car and stick drugs in it. We're unclear on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then let the French have it. Let the French people take the car so that they can once again follow them to the deal and get both ends of it. Get both the French people and the mob. Wait, did they follow? I don't remember them following them to the actual crime scene. We don't see that, but we know it happens because they have the bridge blocked They somehow out the know. They know. So we don't... The movie stops following the cops' point of view at that point, and now you start watching the criminals do their thing, and that's why it's so weird, because we actually see the deal go down and work, and we're like, oh, they're just going to get away with it. But then you see, oh, the cops knew about it and followed them and are there to bust them. Ugh. Yeah. So then there's a huge shootout, and uh-huh. a lot of people, Which is unresolved. A lot of people die, and then the movie's over. Yeah. That it was fun. <laughs> You're still skeptical. I'm really... I, I just... If you weren't here, I don't know if I would have understood what I just watched. <laughs> I feel so stupid. <laughs> um, What would you... Okay, if somebody asks you about this movie, how will you describe it? I'm going to say you got to watch it with Karina. <laughs> no, I can't. Karina gets it. I'm busy. Oh, you gotta, you got to tell a friend what this movie's about. I mean, it's just a, it's about a drug bust. I wonder if Danny's seen cool. this. Danny, Danny loves movies. Yes, he does. I've had Danny on the podcast. Yeah, I feel like... Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, Danny was... Uh, like the opposite end of the spectrum, he was going deep with his analysis. Oh, I, was, like, I bet that was. I bet that was a great episode. No, I was like, well, shh. Yeah. You're you're going too smart for me. I forget what we want. What did we watch again? Ah, oh, I want to say something new. Anyway, it's been so many episodes. I can't remember. It. I feel like it was good. I like. It was a good one. It was entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Danny was great. But I was kind of. I was kind of. I don't know, frustrated, but art's supposed to make you feel something, so maybe... What did you feel? There was a lot of parts that I I felt like, oh, this is exciting, I'm into this. Mm -hmm. But it was all the dumb guy stuff. It was all like, oh, yeah, there's shooting stuff, and there's cars crashing. It was all that stuff, and then the thinking... 
The thinking parts just made me frustrated. <laughs> you... <laughs> I honestly felt the same way. Not so frustrated as you, I think, but, like, the parts of this movie that really got me were the car chases. And I don't... I'm not normally, like, a car chase movie kind of person, but these car chases were fantastic. I felt like it was cool because it's not like in movies where it misses and yeah. it's like everything's all skillful. This guy was slamming it around. It the cars were cool too because it's all the 70s. It felt like they were inventing all this stuff. Like it felt like nobody had seen. And yeah, I feel like you watch this and it's a lot of like hack mm-hmm. concepts like the briefcase opening with all the money. Yeah. The, them getting cut off the job. But then it's like, oh, but maybe this is where... Yeah. It's like seeing someone hump a stool now, and you're like, come on, man. We, <laughs> But you forget that the first time someone humped a stool, it was like, oh, this oh, is amazing. Shit. You're using the stool in your comedy. Yeah. I what a great way to that. illustrate the way you be fucking. Quick side note. Yes. I met a, a guy at a bar on my birthday. Mm-hmm. I can't remember his connection to the comedy scene. I think he was dating some girl who's friends with some guy who was coming through town to do Cold Town. Whatever. Okay. So I'm talking to him, and he's like, yeah, I was involved in comedy a little bit. I'm like, oh, you did comedy? He's like, I didn't do it. I was more like a writer. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, you know uh, John Stringer? I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> I know John Stringer. He's like, yeah, yeah we, we're friends, and I was the one who gave him the idea to like pretend to have sex with the stool. No way. And he claimed that with like a super straight face. That's the French connection of John Stringer. <laughs> I know. And I, he claimed it was such a straight face. I love making connections. Did I kind of believe him? I want to believe that. Like, what I mean, parallel thought. Like he honestly thinks he thought that up. And what's even more <laughs> okay, amazing? John Stringer, the idea to hump the stool. Is I honestly think John Stringer might have gotten the idea from this guy, <laughs> not like from seeing Five Thousand Comics. I don't know. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually a writer. I wrote the stool humping. The stool humping bit. I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. I wrote knock knock. Who's there? Um, That's so anyway, funny. what's interesting to me is that if this movie invented certain techniques of cop movies or car chases all the cliches Uh usually when you go back and try to watch the original or like listen to the Beatles after hearing rock and roll your whole life it's way less impressive yeah and you're kind of like oh well I guess I'll give it credit for being the first one to do it but I've seen it a bazillion times that's come up on our podcast a ton yeah this one holds up like I've seen a bazillion car chases in movies by now and I still think that that's one of the best ones I've ever seen yeah, that one's really cool. Yeah. Chasing the train. And, like, some of the cop shit is some of the most interesting and realistic feeling. I think it's the racism, you're right. Like, when they yeah. add the racism, and it's like, well, yeah, these are really cops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just love my dad. Gene Hackman is the greatest actor of our generation. Yeah, he did a good job. He was very convincing. Yeah. He's just so fun to watch. Oh, my God. You know what? I just realized the last movie I saw in theaters yeah. was Call Me Brother. I forgot about that. Call Me Brother? Christina Parrish's movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking too hard on I think I was thinking of Brother Bear because I assumed mm-hmm. it was a cartoon. Yeah. And compared to Call Me Brother, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I no more comments. That's <laughs> my girl, Christina Parrish. Come on, I can't shit on Call Me Brother. No, don't shit on I thought you were shitting on it. No, no, I um, mean, I mean, call, I would compare Call Me Brother to oh, good. to The French Connection. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I'm like, did you just shit on Christina's movie? No, I feel like that's a big compliment to compare yeah. to... To compare to The French Connection. Yeah. Was, were, there, were there good car chases? I can't get that away. Oh, you're right. Come I'm on. sorry. I, uh, okay, I think I... Lo- by the way, you should check out the episode if you're just listening to this one and you're new to the podcast. Christina Parrish and I watched Rain Man and we had a really oh, good time. Man. Oh, I wish I got that one. <laughs> Believe me, it would have just baffled you just as much. What? For different reasons. For different reasons. I think I don't... I think I don't like movies. Enzo, thank you so much for doing this movie podcast with me. I think I'm sorry, you really feel like you're really in a state. And I really I am. You there, And uh, that's the ultimate sacrifice. I don't think anybody's ever 
kind of gotten to the end point of an episode here looking as flustered yeah I really there's did I just, your night did I actually make the day worse than the dentist I think I I think I have comfort zones that I stay in because I feel competent and uh-huh. you know like oh this is something I know about and I think it was like I, I said this and I think you maybe thought I was joking more than I was but it's like when I used to when I was in school and I'd go to math class and I would just I would hate I would feel so stupid really because all the concepts were so lost on me and I'm feeling that again right now because it's like this was so simple for you and for me it was really I really struggled to keep understand what was going on well man I, I had no idea and thank you for your sacrifice that's like so humiliated. humiliated. Don't be humiliated. No, anyone who's going to watch this is going to be like, oh, this guy is so <laughs> stupid. No, this is, I think, notoriously a complicated plot. I'm pretty sure this is down in history as like one of those... I don't, like, uh, I don't know if the overall plot was that complicated, but there were little the things that they left out where yeah, it's the like... the overall plot and they're trying to sell drugs and... Because the then, the as the cops them. moving forward, I can't stop thinking about, well, wait, why is this car here? Or, wait, why are they doing this? No, the movie was... And now I'm not paying attention yeah. to that. The movie was genuinely confusing like that. I it liked was. it. I, okay. Yeah. I think if we just watched this in the theater and we weren't recording this podcast, yeah. we'd be like, yeah, I liked it a lot. But the fact that it's, I'm now having to expose how dumb I am, you know? it's making me... Uh, feel bad. <laughs> You're not dumb. You've just only seen 26 movies. I, I think you need to watch more movies. And most of them are children's movies. <laughs> Start with the Pixar ones. I mean, honestly, Finding Nemo unlocked more of the plot for you than anything else. So, if yeah. you just keep watching more, you know. I'm going to stick with what I'm comfortable with. You do that, man. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? you uh, got to watch these uh, this Canadian woodworker guy on YouTube. It's it's great. I want to plug Matthias Wendell. I want to plug this old Tony. Great YouTube channel. The mo- not only are the plot simple to follow, it's step by step explained. You never feel like you're in the dark. Oh my gosh, Daresta, check that out. That's the best set of plot. I I have never yeah. heard anybody so selflessly shout out some great YouTube channels before. If you want to watch people just make stuff, you know? if you want to just feel kind of calm and blissful, and kind of have a sense of accomplishment at the end, like you helped make it, yeah. instead of, you know, a feeling of, I don't know if I really understand what I just watched. Well, if it's any consolation, I am really stupid. Frank Howarth. With oh. my hands and building things. That's why I use Legos. I love building Legos because they tell you what to do and the pieces sure. just go together. Wood, like, I made this frame mm-hmm. and this is my, like, woodworking accomplishment of a lifetime. The fact yeah. that I glued pieces of wood to canvas. Was, yeah. And I didn't do a very good job. Is it solid? Or? It's mm-hmm. fence posts. Okay. Yeah, no, I did it terrible. It's a, this is embarrassing. It's not. I mean, it's but, doing what you wanted it to do. This is my French connection. I finished it. Yeah. I'm not sure I understood what I did. And I think I did it wrong. <laughs> so your YouTube channels probably okay. leave me pretty cold. I might not know what was going on during the whole thing. So, yeah. you know, we all should stay in our lane, I guess, is the uh, uh, message, please. Stay in our lane. I, can I, do, I hate to keep drawing this out. I feel like you're trying to end it. But can I say, I... For the record, yes, I think I, I think I liked. I enjoyed watching this movie. I think when we, when you listen back and you hear chop down like us actually watching the movie, uh huh, we were into this. Like, oh, I was we way were, into it. Oh, you we saw? I was digging. literally on the edge of my seat during that car during that car chase. Seriously. So I mean, we enjoyed the experience of watching it. I, I de- yeah, I would recommend it to someone. Oh, it's such a good movie. <sighs> A good movie for once. Uh, thank you for listening to this uh, app, uh, what's it called, podcast, until we finally stumble upon a good movie. Uh, we're going to have to savor that for a while. Maybe, or maybe not. Maybe next week we'll just get it on our end. I actually know what the next episode's going to be, but I don't want to spoil it, because it is like a foggy doozy. Rate us, like us, on whatever you're listening to this on, and uh, see you next week. Thank you. Oh, thank you.